Uh, today we are going to present about not zero, not zero university campuses. And the main motive of this not zero, net zero campuses is to tap the young minds, is to tap the young minds and localize the sustainable development goals and net zero in the university campuses. So then students become the climate ambassador to make their campuses as net zero carbon neutral. And I would like to invite Dr. Rajendra Shinde, who is founder director of Green Day Foundation and former director in, of UNEP. He, he is also a coordinating lead author of IPCC report, which won a Nobel Peace Prize in 2007. And he would give us the context and the background of this non zero net zero university campus. Thank you, Durga, and uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, I'm extremely pleased to be here in Peruvian uh, Pavilion in COP28 in Dubai. Uh, I feel it's a really great honor for me and my colleagues, including uh, Professor uh, Nicole Vernix, who will also be speaking to you. And I can see uh, Leon Shen and uh, Carol Burga, who are here for uh, uh, promoting what is called as a revolution uh, with university campuses to be uh, part of the uh, climate change issues. We have seen that uh, youth has been in the forefront for uh, climate change. We have been seeing youth with placards standing and asking the elder ones or the negotiators to take early action. Uh, and the negotiators now have already started getting the action. But I think it's important to see that youth tell the negotiators to start action by demonstrating that they are also taking action. And this, my presentation is about that. That how youth can be involved in actionism and not just what is called as a activism. Activism is standing on a street with placard saying that everybody should act. But actionism is something where the university students can themselves come out of the classroom and take the action in the campus. So my presentation is about that. So let me start by uh, recalling uh, the, the topmost boss of United Nations, uh, Javier Perez de Puyé who has been, who was a United Nations uh, Secretary General, uh, the third one, who in fact, during his career, he started the issue of sustainable development. If any of you know, it's the World Commission for Sustainability. It was started by him, and he's uh, one of the uh, important uh, personality from the Peru. So Peru was in the forefront of sustainability through uh, Secretary General, and I'm very honored to remember him uh, while I'm speaking on a Peruvian uh, a pavilion today, uh, when the urgent actions are really needed. And we don't have to now produce reports, but now you have to start the actions. I was in Peru about a month back, and what I saw, and I was taken around with the help of uh, Professor Nicole Bernex to see a number of mines there the gold mines, the copper mines, silver mines. And I think they were doing an excellent job of providing us those materials to us for the society to develop. And at the same time, I also saw the university students in Peru who were over enthusiastic about taking the action. They were aware of the climate change issues, but their own question was, okay, fine. We know what climate action need to be done. But what we should do, what we should do as a university student, and then we, I thought that the mining industry has mined the mountains, mining industry has mined the hills, they have extracted the important materials from the, from the soil, but they have not yet mined the universities in Peru, which were the, exactly the sustainable gold it is there in the university. And that mining is necessary. And my message through this project is, is to give that. And let me tell you, it is not just a presentation. It's an action which has started in Peru 
and I'm very glad about it. So universities are the mountains to be mined. And that has not started in the period yet. But it will begin soon. And uh, I know that Peru has about 140 universities and 1.4 million students. That's the number which I had got by talking to various universities when I was there in Peru. And then their emission today is 1.4 million tons. So you can see the, the numbers. 14 numbers is so important for Peru. And what that 14, we have to keep growing the university, we have to keep growing the students, but that 1.4 million tons, we have to bring it to zero. So we have to deep digging of the minds of the university students. And that is not yet started. And that minds where the goal lies is waiting for the world to get mined. So we have the smart campus cloud network, which is the project of university campuses can align and they can form the alliance together for implementation of sustainable development goals in the campus. Remember, it is not about creating awareness of SDGs, which is being created by a number of other programs, and they are doing a good thing. But this project is asking the students to prioritize the relevant SDGs, which are relevant for the campus, and start implementing them in the campus. So why smart? Because we would like to have a digitalization for measuring the progress of SDGs. And campus is the living laboratory. We don't have to have another chemistry laboratory or a physics laboratory or geographical laboratory. We have the campus as a living laboratory and the cloud, which is for sharing, is a cloud networking. I mean, when we do uh, use our iPhones, it goes to the cloud and it starts a partnership with the people. And with that cloud, we would like to use it for this smart campus cloud network. And the network is a partnership. And I think Peru has understood it well. Right from 1970s and 80s, when uh, Secretary General uh, Kuye was there, that unless the countries start partnering with each other, we will not be able to achieve it single-handedly. So what are the operating principles of this smart campus cloud network, which is a global network of universities? There are other global network of universities. This is not the only one, but this is the only one which promotes the actions in a campus. So it is a skilling of the youth. So it's a learning by doing, accelerating by sharing, managing by measuring, by digitalization, and also the monitoring. Our key objectives is the green skill building for the green jobs in the future. The future jobs for the students of the universities are in a green area. And there are enough indications today, and there are good reports which says that the jobs in a renewable ind industry is now much more opportunity than the jobs in a fossil fuel industry or the oil industry. And it also enhances the employability of the world, which is going through what is called as a technology, or industry 4.0. It also provides international mobility for the students. And the Peruvian student from the universities should not only be going to the other universities in the Latin America, but also should be going to North America, it should be going to Europe, it should be going to Asia to form the partnership. And promoting a positive competition. I, I believe that university students represent a positive competition. Everybody is striving hard to be excellent. Unlike in the governments, the governments are politicized and they are engaged in a politics. University students want to engage in a competition that related to the what is called as a wisdom, what is called as a learning competition. You know, the learning and uh, competition that is what the world 5.0 will be. 
that it is a positive competition on sustainability and not only on a GDP. So how it started? It started with United Nations Secretary General, present one, which is uh, our Antonio Guterres and the Prime Minister Modi together launched what is called as a mission life. There's a life for lifestyle for environment. And I think unless we change the lifestyle of the students in the universities, that is a starting point, I don't think we'll be able to achieve the net zero. And then Eric Solom, who is supposed to be here as one of the speakers, is yet to come here. And a former minister of India, uh, environment minister of India, Prakash Jaudekar, they are the mentors of this. So smart campus cloud network is well connected, not only with the former ministers and the secretary general and the under secretary general, but it is also well connected with the other universities, which is spreading fast. And that's what I'm going to say. So Peruvian universities, I've been talking to them for the last four or five years. And it's a professor, Nicole Bernex, who is sitting here. She is the one who has taken up this concept as a practical concept to start implementation on SDGs and net zero. So these are the universities in Peru who are already started work. They have registered with Smart Campus Cloud Network. These are the four ones, and these are the, the next four ones. So total eight universities. And last month when I was there, there are a number of other universities who are extremely keen to get registered and start the work. And Professor Nicole Burnex agreed that her university, PCUP, will be the hub for Smart Campus Cloud Network and start action on SDGs and particularly Net Zero. These are some of the, you, you may be asking what exactly then our role is. Our role is not to teach the students. Students don't need teaching. They can teach us. But what we can say is we can catalyze. We can provide them a minimum information what to do. I was with a Chinese delegate while coming by Metro and he asked me, it's a wonderful idea, but what do university students can do? And then this is the first baby steps for the actions. And these are the kind of booklets which are available. And we keep on having an online meeting with the students to do it. Indoor environment quality, carbon neutral campus guidelines. So these are the ones which are available along with the digital apps and digital dashboards so the students can learn faster. This is one example of what that action could be. This is one of the universities in India who has started what is called an air quality index monitoring station. So it measures in the campus what is the quality of the air, but not only in campus, in the surrounding area also. This is the dash, dashboard where you can measure the emissions of the university. The university should not say that, oh, we are already green because we have a lot of trees in my campus. That doesn't help. We are at the stage that we have to start measuring and reducing it to net zero. And you require a digitalization for that. It doesn't require a qualitative statement, but we require a quantitative statement to see that your emissions are really decreasing. This is one of the examples to tell how much is coming from renewable energy, how much emission is from the grid, which has come from the fossil fuel. And I, I, because of the lack of time, I won't be able to show it but there could be a live demonstration of this right now. And these are the real-time basis. So to end, what I would like to say is uh, Peru is the right country to start and demonstrate to the world that universities are in a forefront for the net zero. The negotiations going on there are just announcements, pledges, promises, but you don't see performance. People are saying that we will pay $500 million, but there is no framework. There is, we don't know how that money which has been placed will come to. And our message to the university students is, don't pledge, don't promise, just perform, just do it. And that's why we are here that students can, university students can talk to us. And I would like to end with this statement of Antonio Guterres. I started by recalling and tributes to uh, the third United Nations Secretary General, uh, Mr. Puye, 
And I would like to end with this statement of the present Secretary General, who said that we are standing on a cliff. And to waste this opportunity would compromise our last best chance to stop runaway climate change. It would not only be immoral not to take action, but it would be societal. And I don't think the negotiators at the countries have realized this, where we stand, but I'm sure university students know where we stand. Thank you very much. Among, among us, uh, former Under Secretary General of uh, United Nations, and he was also a former Environment Minister. But more than that, he is uh, he is very passionate about three P's: that is, people, pla uh, peace, planet, and plastic. So he was a peace negotiator for Sri Lanka. Uh, he is uh, involved into making um, world as a, a single-use plastic free. And also, he is passionate about the planet. So I would like to welcome him for his uh, special address. Thank you. Thank you so much. And good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. So pleased to be at this meeting in the Peru Pavilion to this initiative originated in India, or Bharat, as many Indians name their nation these days. Uh, but it's spreading to the world, and Peru is taking absolutely a leadership position as one of the main drivers of such an initiative. So I'd like to congratulate you with that. I understand that eight Peruvian universities already have started planning to join the initiative. It's a fabulous initiative, mainly because universities everywhere in the world has an absolute special ability to lead. Whenever there are developments in the nations, universities tend to be front and center because they provide a lot of the thinking, the intellectual capacity in every nation. So universities, of course, are absolutely central for the green transformation which we want to make. Uh, I've been a number of times to Peru. It's a wonderful, wonderful nation. Uh, you have had enormous success in the last decades in poverty alleviation, even of course there have also been political challenges in Peru, but uh, a number of poor people in Peru has come down drastically in the last decades, which is which is absolutely wonderful. And of course, Lima is a historical city and you have so, so, so many others. So I really love Peru and I'm so happy that you have joined this initiative. And I hope we can also make other Latin American nations uh, joining this. I thought I would just briefly address the one question I get most often from young people in the world. And that is, does it matter what I do? Can I really do something to change the world? Look, I am not Joe Biden. I am not President Xi Jinping or China. I'm not maybe even a leader of a somewhat smaller nation like Peru, but I'm an individual does it matter what I do? And my answer is very firm and very simple. Don't wait for anyone else to change the world. Change starts with you. You are the change maker. Uh, the great Indian, maybe one of the most wonderful individuals who ever lived on planet Earth, Mahatma Gandhi, got it exactly right when he said, you need to be the change you want to see in this world. Uh, if individuals take action, of course, the action of one individual is not transforming the world. But the action of one individual is spreading to others and help creating the mass movement for the environment, which we do need. And let me make a few suggestions as to what I believe young people and students, basically everywhere in the world, can do. First, the most important at universities are not the textbooks or the, uh, or the premises or the buildings, it's the intellectual debate. It's the role of universities of framing science, understanding the world. So curriculums in every university, everywhere in the world, must encompass environment and basic modern science. Uh, that's very different from nation nation. But everywhere, please put pressure 
on those to make curriculums to make sure that climate and environment is very well reflected. And frankly, we also need to stand up to defend science. Because incredibly, science has come under attack. Sometimes people say, oh, I don't want to take vaccines. Or I don't want to, I don't want to believe in climate science. But look, this is completely illogical because I've never met a person who said, I don't want to take vaccines to add it, but I don't want treatment if I get cancer. So if you believe in modern science ability to do something with cancer, maybe you should believe also in modern science when it comes to vaccines. And the same people who say, I don't want uh, to believe in climate science. Well, very few of them don't believe that NASA brought us to the moon or that the Indians, by the way, just also came to the moon. But that's part of the same science. I mean, NASA, the American Space Agency, is one of the most important sources for the climate science of today's world. So if you believe NASA can take us to the moon, maybe we should also believe that NASA is right when they're putting up a very, very strong warning, warning against climate change. And I can go on and go on. But of course, scientists need to speak about science in such a way that people can embrace it cannot do extremely boring PowerPoint presentations which no one can understand, with any number of scientific expressions which no one can understand, with any number of acronyms which are so prevalent in the UN. Most speeches in the UN, most people in the world cannot understand. And if you cannot understand, uh, you tend to be angry uh, and you tend to go into your corner. So let us change the way we speak about the environment so that more people can embrace it, and look, it cannot only be for the long, young and trendy in, say, Lima. It needs to be a message for the farmers in the uplands of Peru or in the many small cities of this great nation. But of course, exactly the same say in India, it cannot just be for the trendy people in the most advanced cities like, say, Hyderabad or Bengaluru, need to be also for the farmers in the poor part of, uh, of uh, India. So number one, let's work on the curriculums and the way we speak about science. Second, uh, it's in incredibly important that every young person use his or her influence, speak with the parents, speak with the classmates. Uh, most young people in the world are on social media. Why not put out some inspiring stories on social media from people who do something well, not just run around finger pointing to people or condemning people, but look, that lady has done something wonderful in, say, Arakipa. Well, put it out. Showcase it to the world and let others be inspired by that message. Thirdly, we can all plant trees. Uh, Peru is a relatively dry country, uh, but there are many opportunities for planting trees and, uh, and we should do it a lot more. I'm a good friend of the chief minister of the Indian state of, of, of Madhya Pradesh. His name is Shivraj Shovan. Uh, he was just re-elected with an increased majority after running his state for 16 years. So it's quite impressive. But he is planting one tree every day. Why is he doing that? Well, he has created a small little forest just by himself in the capital of the state, which is Bhopal. But of course, much more important, there are 80 million people in this state. And he inspired them also to plant trees in their villages, their parks, their hills, their agriculture fields. So every young person in the world can start planting a few trees and then inspire others to do it. Then demand renewable energies. Every university in the world have roofs. Most universities in the world have parking lots. Well, all these parking lots and roofs should be clad by solar panels. And if you want to go to be inspired for all this, go to China. Where China is now 80% of all solar in the world is in one nation alone. China, 80%. The rest of the world, 20%. Uh, we, need to, we need to move faster. Don't blame the Chinese. Just move faster in India, Peru, Norway, wherever. And solar is a very important part of that because solar energy can be spread everywhere. You cannot build a hydropower plant everywhere cannot build a big wind plant everywhere, but you can put solar everywhere. And mind you, the solar is not coming in any color. 
you want it in yellow or in pink, well, you get it in yellow or pink, not just in blue or black. You get a little bit less energy to put it in yellow or pink, but that may be good if you want to fit, to fit with your design taste or the historical character of your building. It's a historical building. You should not destroy it. You should look into how solar panels can fit into the heritage and the design, and it can all be done with modern solar panels. And finally, let's avoid the plastic uh, pollution. Every single person in the world can drink from a normal cup. Our fathers and mothers and grandparents did it everywhere in the world. And if they had problems those days, it was not because of the cups. Uh, everyone can drink from a, without a straw. Look, Americans, North Americans are using 600 straws per person per year. And quite a lot of them ending up in nature. And so if you stop using all these nonsensical plastic items, there are a number of plastic items we do need. I mean, they're plastic in our cars, make them lighter, so they use less gasoline. We need plastic in our, at the, in our hospitals to defeat diseases. It's not that all plastic can be avoided, but we can avoid cutlery and balloons and straws and, uh, uh, and cups and bottles. All that should go into other materials or avoiding it. And plastic is not just an environment catastrophe, it's also a huge health issue. The other day, the, some of the top surgeons in Beijing found plastic items in the brain of a, per, of a person when they did the surgery of that person. It's a small fragments of plastic which we breathe, which we drink, or say get if we eat a fish which is polluted from plastic. No one knows the exact consequences for the human body of this, but no one has suggested it's good for us to have plastic particles in our brains. And it, of course, calves, seabirds, whales are dying all over the planet. There was a whale dying in Thailand last year. It was dying by vomiting plastic bags. It had an enormous amount of plastic in its, uh, in its um, uh, digestive, system, digestive system. So to sum up all this, look to the curriculum. Try to spread the good message, the positive message of the environment, planting trees, demanding solar panels, and avoiding the unnecessary plastic. That's a lot of things individuals can do. And if the say, small Manuel of Peru do that, well, he inspires others to do the same, and we get that global, uh, global movement for the environment. Thank you so much. And again, thank you to Peru, and thank you to the, the professors and students who join this movement. Rajendra is my old friend, and so I've been inspired by him for quite, quite, for quite some time, but I'm so glad to see that this movement is not taking off in many parts of the world. Thank you so much. Gracias. Thank you, Dr. Eric Sonam. Uh, it is a major key takeaway that university students should be the change. Uh, going ahead, I would like to invite Professor Nicole Burnett, who is director of UCP. And uh, she, as I mentioned, she, is, uh, uh, she keeps a keen interest in shaping the career of life of the students towards sustainable development goals. And that is the reason uh, PUCP is the first international university to become the part of uh, Smart Campus Cloud Network. And she's also a consultant to UNDP, FAO, and to large mining industries as well. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I thank especially Dr. Rajan Rashande, Senior Eric uh, Solheim, and uh, I would like to present what we are doing in Peru. We are doing a lot of things, and I think uh, many of them are very important, but we have a context. Not, I would not like to 
uh, speak about global climate change, but climate change produce, produced by human activities, deforestation, land degradation because of land use changes, desertification, urbanization, and new ways of life. When I met uh, for the first time Dr. Rajendra Shende, it was in uh, 2015 in Paris, uh, in the COP21. And he, he start his conference telling us we will not have smart cities without smart countries. I think also we don't have sustainable planet without smart campus. Smart campus are very, very important. Campus are the laboratories of future, but also a campus is the strength of brain work. I'm not speaking of software. I'm not speaking of hardware. Campus are brainware, and it's very, very important. So uh, I would like also to tell you that one of the things I uh, uh, underlined since that day, since uh, December 2015, it's the importance of HEDEC, Global Development, uh, uh, Sustainable Global, uh, Sustainable Development Goal 17, but to know how to do partnership. Uh, it's a very, very important uh, thing. You may uh, look to our partnership as PUC as Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú with the uh, Peruvian network of university, which are 310,000 uh, students, 19,000 teachers, and 2,000 uh, researchers uh, between 27 universities all over the country, but also the, the Amazon network of university. Amazon is key for our country. We are the country where uh, Amazon born, you know. So he, we are under an Amazon country. So it's very, very important, but we have also consortium of universities private ones, uh, with social responsibility, with a national university. And we have also movement as responsible mining uh, with university. I will speak of that after. You know, this link between university and enterprise. <laughs> Mining the talents of youth in university. How to do that? University is not an island. University has a large territory, not only around university, but also country. For example, in our university, they are helping the municipality to uh, have more and more trees. There's all a project of forestation, but also with National University of Engineers and solar uh, energy development. And our university is developing in other universities than in Chachapoyas in the northern part of Peru, solar energy. A university as National University Rodriguez de Mendoza have more than 80% of uh, solar energy for all university because of uh, how we uh, are solidary with other university. We are not alone. We have all a system of solidarity, interdependence, and so on. 
And you see one of our university of smart campus cloud network, university, National University of Trujillo have a, a price here in a, a COP28. But why? Because they have a new way of doing things. Each two weeks, all the teachers have to give one Saturday to do, to act in the campus, uh, to plant trees or to do all the cleaning uh, plastic or anything, but not only students, teachers have to do that also. And it's interesting to see this new uh, uh, intervention. Another university of uh, the network San Agustin University in Arequipa with a plastic uh, program uh, and, uh, in Smart Campus Cloud Network. And uh, many universities are trying to help in the rural areas to uh, have uh, the, uh, not eucalyptus because they are not the best trees but other type of trees are Kenyales or other native types of trees, which are very friendship with the nature. So uh, there's an effort doing here. What are the challenges? Yes, there are sustainable development goals and uh, up to now, we are taking a special care of some of the goals. For example, the goal 4, 11, 12, because of the consumption, uh, but also 13, to act for climate, and 17. And uh, we are taking a special attention uh, to not zero, net zero, but also to, uh, with water security and eco cities, with solutions based on nature. Because we have to remember that future is cycle. There's a connection and it's always a cycle. So a uh, not only changing is in a single way. Change is multidimensional. We have to change, but not only our students. We have as teachers, professors to change as a researcher. We have to change our way of doing partnership. We have to recognize importance of knowing our heritage, to remember the good practice of the very uh, of the pre-Spanish societies, and we have to learn how to build strategic partnership with enterprise, but also with public institution, with the state, and there's a lot of gaps. Uh, universities are not islands. They have uh, to build bridges and very different bridge, but it's important and students have to contribute to that. They know how to do. We have just to push them uh, to do that. We have to accept also that nature is university number one all over the world. It's the best university and it's completely free. We don't have to pay nothing. I would like to tell you, because I know that a lot of resistance when you speak about enterprise. And I would like to give you two examples of mining enterprise in the North and of other enterprise which have eight operations. Uh, this mining enterprise, which is Newmont Yanakocha, have a foundation. 
and a foundation which is actually working on sustainable uh, territory with a uh, author, uh, NGO, and with uh, municipalities especially. You know, sustainable projects they have uh, with social ecosystems, but with a lot of actors, no one is forgotten. And it's all for uh, sustainable development, including children, uh, including schools and college, including university, including green footprints, planting and harvesting water, including also sustainable business venture uh, to fight against the poverty, create value and improve lives by, many, by means of sustainable and responsible mining. All mining is not sustainable. But we have to make the difference between the first and the other ones. And you have some example. For example, in the lower part, you have the museum of uh, interactive museum of land and water, which is very important. Up to now, they have 35,000 people visiting them since 2020, since the COVID, and mainly all the schools of Kahamarka and college and university learning by its themselves. But also there's a lot of action with university students. And you have also in Buenaventura, a, for example, a, all so students doing practices, but also planting trees, native trees uh, from 4,100 meters up to 3,000 meters, where there's a lot of deforestation and working not only with university, but with school community and with women. They have 40% of women in all the courses. And also, they are taking a, they are supporting completely one university, the only one in Quechua speaking, which is UDEA, Universidad para el Desarrollo Andino, which is a university which is recognized by SUNEDU, it's uh, official recognition. They are doing as a, a education, but they are working a lot around the university, inside the university, in experimental uh, campus, and they are working because all the students are coming from the rural area, and it's very important. It's a way of alternative education. So uh, uh, we are thinking that it's important because we are a country with Quechua, uh, which is a very important language. It's very important to support university with Quechua speaking, and they are speaking also uh, Spanish. So uh, I will not speak uh, of uh, a Pontifical Catholic University because after that we have a small video about that, but I will uh, to I would like to end recording that Albert Einstein told us we shall require a substantially new manner of thinking if mankind is to survive. And we have to survive and we have to uh, create a new manner of thinking. Campus bringing the talents of youth 
to life. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Nicole Burnix. Uh, I like a very important point that nature is a university, which is very true, that we are learning from the nature and youth are the best to learn uh, nature-based solution as well as using, using the digital technologies. Um, I would like to now invite Professor Silvana Vargas. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a video speech by her. Yes, and uh, to introduce her, she is a main professor of Department of Social Sciences, PUCP. She has extensive work experience in international technical cooperation, public sector grassroots organizations and research centers. Her most recent research topic includes territorial human development, agri-food systems and transformative social policies. Good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure to be part of this panel. I am now based in Lima, Peru. But in a way, I can be with you at least virtually. Let me please start and, and share with you my presentation so we can start this, uh, this conversation as soon as possible. Uh, I've been in invited, uh, thanks to Dr. Nicole Vernex, to be part of this panel. We prepared this presentation with Sofia, with Sofia Wangal, who is part of our team. At the Academic uh, Directorate of Social Responsibility at the Universidad Católica eh, eh, del Perú. Uh, we will focus on the role youth have in these uh, issues about social and climate responsibility as part of a way to move towards net zero campus of universities. The first thing I wanted to share with you is that we need to take into account the context in which Peru is actually developing. Uh, according to this ranking of mega diversity around the world, Peru is in the place number eight. And this might be, of course, a great, a great, um, a great way to share the things we are doing, the, con the, the way that the country works, and all the marvelous uh, landscapes it has. However, it is also an enormous challenge to be able to cope with the responsibility of keeping up this mega diversity in this context that we all uh, are aware of. Within this context, an, an important issue is that we need to start making policies at the highest level. A couple of years ago, the environment, the Ministry of Environment uh, approved the national policy of environment towards 2030. And this policy is actually providing a number of guidelines to promote our work as a country at different levels, including universities. And speaking of universities, I wanted to share with you that the university I represent this in this panel today is in the first place occupies the first position in the ranking of sustainable development goals in terms of accomplishment in, in, in the country. This is according to the Times Higher Education Ranking. And this, of course, make us very, very happy, but again, give us a lot of responsibility. Within this responsibility, as part of the work we provide and conduct in terms of social responsibility, we are uh, promoting a number of strategies. And to start, social responsibility is for us the expression of the ethical commitment that university has, particularly around the challenges of sustainable human development in the world. It's a way to move forward towards this responsibility. And we consider this social responsibility, of course, is uh, in a way transversal to training, research, and university management. It's not an issue, an isolated issue, but is uh, in, in reality part of all these processes that university is based upon. And in, particularly, in particular, we are developing a strategy that we are in one way or the other in love with, 
that we call Campus Sostenible, Sustainable Campus in English. This is a collaborative platform to foster environmental sustainability in the campus towards net zero, but actively involving our community, particularly our community youth, meaning our students. And I wanted to share with you three dimensions of this strategy that deal with the work uh, students are um, leading. The first one deals with environmental volunteering work. The second one deals with innovative knowledge generation. And the third deals with sustainable university governance. In terms of environmental volunteering, there are a number of beautiful pictures of all the work that we have been conducting this year. The goal is basically to enhance environmentally committed active learning experiences among students of different disciplines. How to make sense of what they are actually learning, but applying this knowledge to specific experiences dealing with environmental challenges. The main topics we have been working around this year are tree planting, beach cleaning, solid waste management, sustainable water management, sustainable mobility, and a number of environmental hackathons where they provide some ideas based in, in innovation, based upon innovation. Some uh, achievements we have been able to quantify, we have uh, committed and involved around 339 volunteers, volunteers this year, and they are particularly from the areas of law, education, geography and environment, environmental and sustainable engineering, communication for development and psychology. This doesn't exclude the possibility of other areas to be involved, but these are the areas or the, the disciplines they, the, the majority of them come from. The second dimension deals with innovative knowledge generation. And here we conducted a rapid, a quick analysis of all the knowledge that is being produced based on what we call um, thesis, professional degree thesis or the work they have to comply when they conclude their career. The goal here is to generate evidence, evidence-based multidisciplinary sound, either new or renewed knowledge about environmental sustainability. Main topics that we have been able to identify, sustainable occupation of urban spaces, innovation and business organization, management of protected natural areas, territorial dynamics of occupation of rural space, among many others. Some achievements we have quantified, we have around 910 undergraduate thesis presented in the period 2019-2023. And again, the uh, main areas that are working environmental sustainability include architecture, geography and environment, environmental and sustainable engineering, the social sciences and the area of management. And third, we have this sustainable university governance. And this actually means not only what we do, but all the decisions we're making to make our work around environmental sus sustainability actually sustainable, sustained. So here we have um, emphasized the strengthening of leadership and networks among environmental student organizations from a multi-actor collaboration approach trying them to collaborate among units, among units, uh, administrative units, and of course, with actors that are strategic for the university. Main topics we have covered as part of these uh, efforts include the design of projects and the implementation, of course, either within and among university strategic stakeholders. Some achievements we have been able to work closely with five student organizations, 11 university academic and administrative units, and 10 external organizations, including, of course, the Ministry of Environment, a number of NGOs, a district, municipality, and other universities. To conclude, some ideas as to how to move or where to move forward towards this issue in terms of involving the youth in sustainable efforts. Uh, first, we think, um, and we were talking with Dr. Rajendra, that uh, it's very important to identify the strategic thematic areas we want to prioritize. 
not all issues are uh, urgent at the same level. So we need to make an effort in terms of making priorities. These priorities at the same time need to be aligned to the priorities in terms of university policies. And this is the way planning actually takes place. We identify the priorities, but the priorities need to be reflected in what we are going to do, where we are going to do it, how we are gonna go, in, we, how we are going to do that, and especially how those efforts are gonna be funded. In the third place, uh, uh, along with the priorities uh, um, identification, we need to enhance capacities at different levels. This means working with authorities, with faculty, with the administrative staff, and of course, with our students. And one strategy that has proven to make uh, great um, contributions is to work uh, through networks and alliances. These uh, efforts need to be, of course, permanently measured and uh, reflected in indicators in terms of what kind of research is actually conducted, what type of training is actually conducted, and what type of volunteering work is actually taking place to be able to show not only how far we have been able to move, but also what are the gaps that we need to, in, way, in one way or the other, start to, to close and address. And finally, and this is the reason why we are here, we need to keep implementing collaborative interventions locally with the actors I already mentioned, but also regionally. We are working very, very hard to establish a network a coalition in terms of youth around environmental issues with universities in Colombia, in Chile, and hopefully in Mexico as well. So in that way, we can promote inter, um, inter-university exchange. We can promote some sort of collaboration in practice through research and through training. Thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you, Dr. Silvana Vargas. I would like to invite Dr. Rajendra Shiri for giving the concluding remarks. Hello. Uh, extremely very unique session uh, today. Uh, and I would like to, there is a concluding sentence that's Professor Silvana said that what matters is a partnership. And the partnership is not only with the countries, not only with the states, but it's a partnership with universities who are tomorrow's actors to set our future on the right path. Because we are definitely not on the right path. We are standing on a cliff. And today, we don't require only a single person to pull us out of the cliff but we require a partnership alliance. And that is, I think, the conclusion of this uh, particular seminar. Uh, this session, uh, I consider it is a very unique session. But I started my uh, speech by recalling the efforts of uh, third United Nations Secretary General, uh, Javier Perez de Cuir, uh, who in fact uh, took a lead in the World Sustainability Commission and today, we have in this session, you know, former United Nations Under Secretary General, uh, Eric Solan. So we, this is a unique session. This, this is another unique session for the reason that there are professors from the universities who are telling us what action they have taken. And this is also a unique session because it's not only Peru. I see Peru, Norway is a symbolic of Eric Solan, as well as China which is uh, uh, our friend Shen, uh, Bjorn Shen, who has been involved in a lot of activities in Peru or uh, teaching the students about uh, finding the nature solution. So I would like to conclude by saying that uh, we have uh, achieved to send a message that real actors are in a university campus and the campus is a living laboratory for implementing sustainable development goals and the net zero. Thank you. Namaste.